battery packs and this motor and this controller and they're going to somehow work together and the van's going to go. But a little bit of the theory and sort of what all of these wires are doing is what we're going to talk about. Um, the motor is looking for application of voltage through the outer set of windings. The inner set of windings is turning when you apply electricity to the outer set of windings. It forces the interior magnets to rotate. So we apply electricity through this, this big connector here. And you can see there's one red wire and one black wire. The charge controller is the next thing in line after the motor. The charge controller feeds the power into the red wire and it receives the power back through the black wire through this shunt here which is like kind of like a uh, like a gate. That's the main thing the controller is doing is, is changing the amount of voltage applied to the motor. It changes the voltage applied to the motor in response to this potentiometer box. So there's a little stainless steel box here that has a little spring and is connected to the gas pedal. So when you step on the gas pedal, the lever moves like so. JJ, maybe you could step on the gas. Here we go. If everyone can look down here and have a quick see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there's two little yellow wires that come onto the, 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 uh, the potentiometer and register the amount of resistance and send that signal over here to the controller which then tells the controller how much voltage to apply to the motor. The controller gets its electricity from the battery pack through several safety uh, components. There's two things called solenoid electrical contactors and the way they work is the wire comes in on one side there's a switch and then the wire goes out on the other side. Now when you apply electricity to the solenoid, it connects the switch. So 12 volts is connected to the 12 volt side of our vehicle. And when you put the 12 volts to this solenoid, it connects the switch, thereby allowing the battery voltage, which is 144 volts, to go through the switch and be applied to the controller. And we have two of these. One is on the positive side and one is on the negative side of the battery. And they're actually set to two different uh, controls. One is set to the ignition key, so when you turn the ignition key on, one should pull in, and that should be the primary contactor, which is this one here, labeled primary contactor. And the other one is labeled secondary contactor, and that one functions when you step on the gas pedal. The third piece of safety equipment in the trunk here is the fuse and if there's too much current for whatever reason it's set to 500 amps that'll open that's a one-time failure yes once it fails you're done but there obviously was a problem and it's to prevent too much electricity from getting to the controller it's to prevent too much electricity from getting to the motor and burning those things up and which side of the positive or it's it's on the most negative piece of the system. So now we're going to talk about the batteries. The batteries, pretty much you can think about it as one long string of batteries. And, and you can think of this is the start. This is the most negative. And as you measure across each battery is 6 volts. And as you measure to the next battery, it's 12 volts. And then 18, and etc., etc., all the way along. So, so this is the first connection at the negative and then you connect all the batteries. This link here connects the rear battery bank to the forward battery bank, the positive to the negative on that battery bank. You continue adding batteries until you get to the most positive terminal on that battery bank, at which point you have roughly 144 volts. In the front of the car, there's a contact that's a circuit breaker with a, disc, a manual disconnect. So you can use it to manually shut off the electricity and in the event of an overload it will automatically shut off the electricity. And that's mounted in a box just to the rear of the charger the, and in between the two seats. And then from that main disconnect the wire comes back through the passenger compartment 
and comes into this contactor, which again is the main power supply to the controller, and it's only energized when you turn on the key. So for the safety test that we're going to do, we're going to verify that the contactors function without any power running through them, but we're going to verify that when you do turn the key, they close, and when you open the key or turn off the key, they open. When you step on the gas, the secondary contactor should close and it'll let the electricity through. And then we'll do some checks of uh, grounding to make sure that none of our wire batteries are grounded anywhere because you don't want all this energy in the batteries going into the body of the vehicle. And that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. You have all the batteries, you have the charge controller, you have some safety devices, you have a motor, and you have a potentiometer connected to a gas pedal. The gas pedal is used very loosely because now it's an electron pedal. <laughs> you're no longer pushing gasoline, you're pushing electrons. So you can change it to the e-pedal if you like. Question for you. So you push down the gas, it closes the secondary contactor, and you have juice. And that's every time, so whenever you let off the gas, it disconnects that secondary contactor? Yeah, I didn't wire it, but supposedly yes. So we're going to verify that. Okay. And if you, in fact, when you forgot to drive the e Allen's uh, EV yesterday, and it was the same thing on the Cooper, when you when you lift your foot up off uh, the gas, you stop when like, the motor goes, you know? And yeah. then it's a kind of an unusual feeling, <laughs> you know? And, and, and the Cooper, because it was an automatic, you didn't have to use the brake. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. really weird. <laughs>